I wanted to do some full in-depth reviews on some of the items that I picked up during the sale that I know a lot of you asked me about. But this whole video is just going to be awesome because I'm using a ton of new makeup that I bought recently and giving you those tidbits. But the main focus for today, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side wear test of the IT Cosmetics CC Nude Glow and then the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer because a lot of you guys asked me about both of these and my thoughts, particularly the Rare. We're going to have a focus on that today. I'm going to give the NARS Summer Unrated palette a try. Some of you are interested in that. I'm going to go over a little bit more in detail the Fenty Sunstalker Face and Eye Bronzer Highlight palette because I gave you incorrect information about it the first time. And then the last big major product that I'm really doing that full eight hour wear test of today that I'm looking out for is the new Gucci liquid lipsticks. So we have a lot of items, but again, I'm still using just a lot of new items in general, but those are the main focuses. Does that make sense? You got it? Yeah. It's a video chock full of awesome products that we are going to be testing today so that I can give you guys an update on whether or not these products are worth it, hopefully before the end of the event. So let's get into it. Okay, so I am not gonna do anything crazy with base. I've been testing a lot of different bases, but I want to definitely have some controlled products here just so that I can see how they work. For example, I've been testing the Dior concealer, but for the foundations today, I'm not gonna test it because I want to see particularly how the foundations work with products that I'm familiar with. So I just have my face normally hydrated. I've been using the Elemis moisturizer, which is phenomenal by the way. And then I already have my Tula Skincare Mineral Magic sunscreen. I've actually tested both of these foundations pretty thoroughly at this point. The It Cosmetics Nude Glow, I wanna say, I've worn like three times. Rare Beauty, I've worn four times. So I definitely have my thoughts on these, but I'm curious as to how they compare so I'm going to put the It Cosmetics CC New Glow on this side, and I do enjoy this product. I think I still prefer the OG one over this, but this is still kind of like more of a nice natural skin tint kind of situation. So I'm going to use my beauty blender, and we're going to blend this out. So you can see I don't get too much coverage. You can see all of my freckles underneath, but I think it gives a really pretty glow. And honestly, it does remind me a lot of the Rare Beauty, which is why I wanted to test them side by side. I feel like the Rare Beauty, though, is a bit thicker. Something about this is a little bit more lightweight. So this is with the first coat. I mean, this product does not do any smoothing or anything like that, but it does kind of alleviate some of the redness and just make the skin look better, which you can see with the side-by-side -side comparison. I've been using the Rare Beauty a lot more recently, and I haven't used the It since trying the Rare Beauty. This is definitely more lightweight than the Rare Beauty. So by the way, I do have the IT CC Nude Glow in Light Medium, and then we're gonna hop on over to the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. The shade 24N is a pretty great shade for me. So my thoughts on this, I do actually really like this, but it's not perfect. It's definitely thicker. It does not minimize my pores. It just kind of, kind of leaves them as is. If I'm being honest, <laughs> because it is a dewier product though, that will kind of emphasize them a little bit, but I don't know, I like this. I don't love it though, I will say that. It's just not my favorite skin tint, but I still think it is a good one. But in some cases, I think that it can look a little thick on the skin. And I'm looking at it right now, it has a little bit more dewiness to it compared to the It Cosmetics. So I'm happy I'm comparing these side by side because I've been curious. I think it does provide more coverage than the It Cosmetics as well. I'm gonna be honest with you, seeing these side to side, and I do think they need to dry down a little better. I thought that I liked the Rare Beauty better, but I'm looking at side by side. I think I prefer the side with the it just because I feel like it looks a little heavy right here, a little bit thicker. Whereas this, while it's less coverage, the skin just looks a little healthier and smoother and like there's less product. Though I do think I might've applied too much of the rare. So let's make it even <laughs> and apply a little bit more of the right here in the center. I wanna use a brush since I got the sponge so coated in the rare beauty. Yeah, up close. I I would say just with the finish, the Rare Beauty is emphasizing the pores ever so slightly, but I think once I use powder and concealer, these are gonna be really kind of neck and neck. 
So wear time is going to be the difference between these. But what do you think? So they both kind of give that similar really lightweight, like coverage, glowy finish. But both aren't too glowy. So I'm liking these, both of them so far. I'm going to quickly do my eyebrows. <laughs> Since these aren't the star of the show, I'm just going to fast forward through them and talk about them in a voiceover, but I did pick up the Refi eyebrow system, so I'm gonna give these a try. I've been testing them, I think I like them, but it's definitely outside of my comfort zone when it comes to eyebrows. So I've been enjoying this pomade product a lot. Be careful not to apply too much because it can leave a bit of a white cast, but it does a nice job of giving me that feather brow look. And then this brow pomade, for me, it's just unnecessary. It's good, but I'm never gonna use it. I do, however, really enjoy this eyebrow pencil it's really fine deposits the right amount of product I've been enjoying it a lot so this is one that I do recommend and I'm just brushing my eyebrows out here and then I've been using the makeup forever artist stick just to clean up underneath to make everything look freshly waxed and I'm blending that out right here using a classic NARS radiant creamy concealer just so that I can use it as a controlled you know, <laughs> for the foundation. And then I'm setting with my favorite Huda Beauty blue setting powder for this step. Okay, let's bronze the cheeks up. I've been playing more with the Fenty Sunstalker face and eye bronzer highlight palette. And I said in my haul, and I quote, I will punch myself in the face if all of these are repeat shades because I said that they were new shades, but they're all repeat shades, so. <laughs> no, but they just aren't the shades that I had, so that's why I thought they were new. But yeah, these exist. We have India Sun, Private Island, Caramel Cutie, Coconati, Thick Mint. I do think the highlights are new, but I could be wrong on that. But anyways, this I don't necessarily recommend unless you're a makeup artist. It's just, why do you need all of these bronzers? Now, that being said, the bronzers, gorgeous. So I'm just starting off with taking some of India Sun to kind of shade the face just like this. And then I'm going to go into Carmel Cutie because the bronzer that I use from Fenty is like between these two shades. No, but the bronzers are very nice quality, but I just don't think you need it. Now, if you like brown eyeshadow, then I think you will like this to get it all over brown look. But if you are not a makeup artist and you don't plan on using this as both an eyeshadow palette and a face palette, then there really is no purpose for you in having it. It's great quality. Use it on the eyes. Use it to contour. Use it to sh highlight but you don't need it. Just the concept of it is kind of odd to me. And the highlight pans are so small. I even find the bronzer pans to be a little small for my bronzer brush. So I plan on using this for eyeshadow as well because I have it. I don't know. It's good for travel, I guess. You can decide if you want it or not. I'm just here to confirm the quality is good. These are all repeat bronzer shades and ask you why you need a palette of a bunch of bronzer shades. But if you think you're gonna get a ton of use out of it with the highlights and the bronzers and use it on your eyes, sure, go for it. It actually is a very nice palette. I do like the quality in this highlight. Super duper pretty. But just ask yourself that. Food for thought, right? <laughs> so that's my thought on that. Really like it, but it is not necessary. Am I mad that I bought it? No, but I bought it because I'm a makeup review channel. And if I were not a makeup review channel, I certainly would not have bought that. But she's cute. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my new blush from Laura Mercier in Ginger. This is not part of the review, but if you're looking for a great blush formula, you should try the Laura Mercier blush formula. This Ginger shade I bought during the sale and it's so pretty. Also, I'm not gonna put these on because I do have highlight on, but if you didn't see, the new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk collection came to Sephora so you can get it for a discount during the sale. The collection is beautiful. I love the quad. And these multi-glows are also amazing. I mean, probably not something you necessarily needed in your collection, but I do have a whole review if you want more details on it. Awesome. Highly recommend buying those during the sale if you are interested because they are phenomenal quality. I'm really excited that those came out at Sephora while the event was going on, so I did want to share that. Okay, I'm going to do one eye with the NARS palette, and then I'll be back to show you how I got the look. So I tried this. I've been wanting to try it so bad. In mine, this one is like falling out, and it's making me really sad, but the rest seem really good. This is a great palette. I think it is so pretty. Is it something that you need? Absolutely not. It's a basic NARS palette with the same shades repeated all over again, but am I mad that I have it? No. You see how 
how dark this matte shadow is. So pretty. So yeah, I mean, if you buy NARS palettes, this is just another NARS palette with the same dang neutral peachy shades. You don't need it, but I think it's really pretty and the quality is so good as per usual. I'm gonna use this satin dark brown. I wish there was like a few more shades to add some depth. I mean, this is a very like neutral palette. Browns, golds, and pinks are the looks you're gonna get with this, but just so happens that I love those looks. So I like this palette. If you're debating, and I don't know why you would be, but if you're debating between getting this or the Patrick Ta palette, definitely get the Patrick Ta palette. I think the Patrick Ta palette is more fun, has more fun textures, but this one is more of a basic palette, you know, just to have certain colors with you. You get a lot of colors at once. I think it's a better value than the Patrick Ta. But yeah, it's, it's just another NARS palette. Nothing too special about it. You don't need to run out and pick it up. If you were to ask me if I'm mad at that I picked it up or if I regret my purchase, I don't. Because this shade right here, so stunning, super duper textured. I'm tilting my head back, but I really didn't get much fallout with this. No sticky base, no wet brush. Look at all this dimension. I think it's so dang beautiful. Then I'm gonna take this shade right here, which is more of a satin shimmer. Put it in the center just to add a little bit more interest to the eye. But how pretty is that, right? And then I'm gonna take this light shimmer here and I'm gonna use that to brighten up the look. Wow, that's so pretty. So, I mean, typical great NARS eyeshadow quality and very pretty colors, but very typical <laughs> NARS colors. So that's up to you to decide. But I do give it a thumbs up if it's a palette that you're interested in. I think it is so gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go off camera, do my usual liner lashes, mascara routine, because I don't have anything new. And we will work down to the lip. I'm excited to show you this new Gucci liquid lipstick. So I really like this palette. <laughs> I'm not gonna necessarily recommend it to you because I don't think it's a palette that any of you probably need if you have a somewhat substantial eyeshadow palette collection, but I do like it if you've been curious about it. The last thing I wanted to talk about were the new Gucci lipsticks because I thought this would be an interesting product for you guys. I saw these in stores. I, I think there's a few more shades online than in store, but on the display, this was the lightest shade. All of them seemed to run very deep. I ended up with the shade Cornelia Pink, but the packaging of this, oh my gosh, leave it to Gucci to make a liquid lipstick absolutely stunning. I love the cap. I mean, it's simple packaging, but it just, it's so luxe and I love this shade. I've worn it a few times. This is such a lightweight formula. It kind of reminds me of like a velvet lip blur as opposed to a liquid lipstick. You can see it doesn't have the heaviest level of opacity here. So you, I definitely would say if you want a more dramatic lip, use a lip liner as well with this. I'm not going to today so you can see the true wear time. You don't need to for a more natural lip, but for me, I definitely like that lip definition. So most of the time I would wear a lip liner, which does help with the longevity of this. But I wanna show you this in its true form. So this is a product I think you do need to layer a couple of times to get the color that you see in the component. But it is so lightweight. It feels like you have nothing on the lips. You can layer as many times as you can. It's not going to feel dry. And it has a decent amount of wear time, which I will show you guys in today's wear test. But yeah, I mean, I hope that you can see it looks it's more like the M Cosmetics lip blurs. That's a formula that I would compare it to. But here is the final look. I'm not gonna set with anything weird or anything. I mixed old and new products just so that I could see how these newer products perform. In terms of the skin, I think I'm liking the way that the It Cosmetics is looking better than the Rare Beauty. I was not expecting that. They look pretty close right now, but something about this side with the It Cosmetics, I feel like looks a little bit more perfected. I'm gonna turn the lights down a couple notches. Can can you tell a difference? What do you think? I'm really curious. This is the main test that I am doing today with these two. I will catch you guys in a few hours. I have some editing and some more filming to do, but this is the final look with all these products that I am testing today for you. Ooh. It's update time. So it's about seven o'clock. I've been wearing the makeup for about three and a half hours now. And here is how we're looking. So I did walk a little bit outside, but then it started to rain. So I've been working in a coffee shop. So I haven't done too strenuous 
activity really let's take a closer look honestly both sides look really great you'll notice that there's a little bit of a deeper smile line situation going on here that's just the smile line this is a deeper smile line so it's always a little deeper on this side but I mean, I think my skin looks really great. Yeah, I just feel like the side with the It Cosmetics looks just a little bit softer, but I'm looking pretty darn close in a mirror. So again, what do you guys think? How are we thinking so far? The eyebrows are holding up super good. Eyeshadow still on there. Lip Lipstick I think is really great because even though most of it has faded at this point, my lips don't look dry at all. I ate a bagel and a drink at the coffee shop that I was working at. Super duper comfortable and my favorite part, you can reapply and it's not an issue. One of my least favorite parts about liquid lipsticks is when you reapply, your lips look dry and chunky and PC. Good as new with the reapplication. So I'm loving this. I just wanted you guys to get the feel for the texture of this. And everything is looking quite phenomenal right now. So I will update you at the end of the night to let you know how everything is going. But I had some really good pickups during this event. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Hello, good evening. I stayed up till 11 o'clock for you guys with this makeup on. That is dedication to my channel. But I wanted to do the final wear test. We hit the eight hour point. And here's how we're looking. I think we look really, really good. Drum roll, please. I prefer the cosmetics, but I think they both look fantastic. They are both really great skin tints. I think you can actually apply too much of the Rare Beauty. I've just become more experienced since this is like the fourth, fifth time that I'm wearing it. But as long as you don't apply too much, it is a beautiful skin tint. I just feel like the CC from IT has a little bit of a softer finish on the skin. But both are really great and they're very, very close. I don't know if you can see, but you shouldn't be able to see much, if any, difference really at all. Yeah, no, they both look good to me. In terms of everything else that was kind of new that I used today, the NARS Summer Unrated Palette. While she is gorgeous, you definitely don't need her, but she's so pretty. So, I mean, you can see, look, no creasing. The eyeshadow is still quite vibrant. It lasted a long time. I mean, NARS has a good formula. They just gotta work on those colors. What else did I wear that was new today? The Laura Mercier Ginger Blush. While this is new, I'm very familiar with the formula. One of my all-time favorite formulas. The Refi Eyebrow Products. I mean, my brows are still looking as they looked before, I would say. These aren't my favorite eyebrow products, though. Like, it's a bit too finicky for me, I, but they hold up. My brows look good, they don't fade in color, they don't lose the shape. The Fenty Sunstalker Bronzer Palette, there is a 95% chance that you don't need this, but it's good. I like the highlight in it a lot, but you don't need it, but maybe you do. Who am I to say? And then finally, the Gucci Liquid Lipstick Balm. I did reapply it, but it's just super comfortable, super layerable. I wouldn't exactly market this as a liquid lipstick. Lip blur, that's what I keep saying, a lip velvet. That's what it is, but if you like those type of formulas, beautiful formulation, and the best part is you can layer it on as many times as you want throughout the day, and it is not going to look nasty, which is something that I find with these types of products. The longevity on them is decent. It's the kind of situation where if you eat, you're gonna have to reapply. But the great thing is, it's easy to reapply. So, and it will leave somewhat of a stain underneath so that your lips don't look really dull or anything. But yeah, that was my wear test, testing some of the products that I wanted to try that I picked up during the Sephora sales so far. Something I also saw, the Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury collection is on Sephora, so maybe jump on that before that event ends, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you tried both of these, which one do you like better? I need to know. So thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.